Fraud, Huber, Gallagher, Hango, Saxon, Zork. What civilization would use such strange names? And what do they mean? How about Defender, Centipede, Frogger, Donkey Kong, or Pac-Man? It is you, Earthlings, who are responsible for these creations. Do you realize the effects they may have on your world? introduction of Pong approximately 10 years ago, the world of video games has grown in leaps and bounds. From the simplicity of asteroids to the difficulty of Stargate, the business has grown into a $5.7 billion industry. One of the major reasons for this growth was Pac-Man. The advent of this game alone was enough to bring about one of the largest mass marketing projects in American history, with everything from clothing, to number one songs, to Saturday morning cartoons. But the original Pac-Man was just a taste of things to come. It spawned Pac-Man Plus, Super Pac-Man, Baby Pac-Man, and Ms. Pac-Man, just to name a few. What's behind this fascination with video games, and what benefit or harm could be the result? Vernon Richards, counselor at the Family and Children's Service of Lancaster County. There's nothing wrong with a little escapism. It's, it's when we carry it overboard, I think, that it gets to be troublesome. What do people who play these games have to say? It's all right. It's time to play. Um, you spend a lot of money on them? No, I don't have a lot of money to spend. It's up to do. Communications bought a struggling Atari Incorporated in 1976 and turned it into a giant in the video game and home computer field, they had no idea of the impact it would have on the computer industry. How do people feel these home computer games compete with the arcade games? The graphics of the home computers just can't compare yet, and uh, there's no no challenge as far as um, you have you have as much of a challenge trying to fight the controls as running as dealing with the program. What do you mean by fighting the controls? They're, um, well, I've tried some of the Ataris and whatnot, and the Sears, and uh, they're too erratic. They're um, not not sensitive. They're not quality material. Uh -huh. And you feel that the, the games that you find in an arcade are quality material? For the most part, before they get abused, yeah. yeah. And, um, we see a lot of that down here, but um, the, the screens are a lot clearer, the uh, programs are more sophisticated, the processors can deal with this stuff faster. Right. Um, it's more of a challenge, you have to think about what's coming up next and not how to, to play with the controls. Uh -huh. a trendy thing. Uh, yeah, they, most of them would rather play the games mm -hmm. than do homework. Most kids would rather play than do homework. Uh, I think if we had the homework as a video game, they'd still rather play than do the homework as a video mm -hmm. game. You know, homework is homework. And right. In 1982, this was a $5.7 billion industry, and there is no foreseeable decline.
Richards also feels that other problems can arise from video games. You know, there's, there's been problems with pool halls, mm -hmm. and pinball machines, and now it's video games. In some ways, I think the pool halls are a little better because at least they taught socialization. Right. But when you're in a pool hall, you got to learn to get along with somebody else. When you're playing a pinball machine, you really don't. When you're playing a video game, you really don't. So I think that's one of the drawbacks of the games is that they are very individualistic. That's the sort of thing you're very focused on a screen mm -hmm. instead of on other people. So I think that it, yeah, it does get to be a drawback. Lack of communication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think too much escapism, I think, is, is one negative aspect. Uh, the fantasy stuff uh, can be carried to extreme by kids, but again, I don't see that as being a major problem. Uh, the It's another way for kids to do something maybe their parents don't like, uh, and there's a lot of, sometimes a lot of social support in playing video games. Mm -hmm. That's a negative aspect. But the other negative aspect is that, uh, very frankly, when you get involved in an arcade type situation, you get a variety of different kids hanging around. And there's a potential for some problems there around, you know, whole, the whole gamut of affairs. Uh, but that wouldn't be any different in a pool hall or a, or a jukebox. That's or expensive, else. too. I suppose there have been kids that have stolen money from their parents or neighbors or somebody to, to play the video games. So right. I don't think that's a video game's fault. But, you know, it, it's happened, sure. Mm -hmm. And I think that, yeah, I think that a repeated exposure to violence can desensitize people to the effects of violence, uh, be it on the video game, be it on TV, whatever. So I, I would, you know, I don't particularly like those, and I think they could be somewhat harmful. President Reagan likes them, though, because they help make better fighter pilots. Since video games produce a lack of communication, it becomes very easy for us to close the door of our own minds to feedback and ruins the imagination of our children. And when creativity is gone, all original thought is destroyed. Nobody knows in which direction the future of the video industry is headed, but it must be toward something constructive, games that let children use their imaginations. Remember, a quarter is a terrible thing to waste. Yeah.